So I was at AFI Fest last month and I got to see M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Split. And wow, what a surprise. It was actually, you know what, I'm actually surprised. It was actually kind of good. You think this was a joke? I'm not even kidding. It was actually good. I know, the trailer looked like shit and I was laughing my ass off at it too, but the movie was actually kind of good. It's 2016, Donald Trump is president and M. Night made a good movie again. Now M. Night was actually at the screening and introduced the film. He talked about how now that he's on smaller budgets being produced by Jason Blum, it's easier for him to get a small crew together to do reshoots rather than request millions of dollars more from a studio. And that does make sense, but let's not forget that these films are fundamentally broken. Sorry M. Night, but you can't just pretend like these films suddenly would have been fixed if you were able to reshoot a couple scenes. Also, The Visit was a micro-budget film and that was absolutely unbearable. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten I'll make a bigger review in the future. By the way, thank you Chris Stuckman for saving me and Big Money Salvia some pretty dank seats. Now that being said, the movie wasn't great, but it definitely was not bad. There are things that this movie did well, but there are also things that this movie did not so well. Let's start off with what it did well. First of all, the movie was really well shot. As I was watching the film, I was like, holy shit, where has this M. Night been the past 10 years? As it turns out, he had actually brought on the cinematographer from It Follows. The shots were not only nicely framed, but they often had a slow, creeping movement to them that really brought out the tension in the film. The soundtrack was also well done and did a nice job at complementing that exact same tone. Now, despite the trailer for this film being laughable as shit. I mean, just even trying to imagine how M. Night would tackle this concept was almost a joke in of itself, and the few staggered clips we get of James McAvoy might not be poorly acted, but they sure look ridiculous. But watching the full experience in the film, it was surprisingly well delivered. This is a film that simply would not work with a less talented actor. James McAvoy was easily the best part of this film, and he was an absolute blast to watch. Seeing him take on a role where he plays multiple personalities is brave to say the least, especially when that role is in an M. Night Shyamalan directed film. There are many ways in which this could have been an absolute disaster, but believe it or not, it turned out pretty good. Now as for what's not so good about the film, there are a couple things. Namely, these girls' performances. Like, I'm pretty sure if you were kidnapped by an insane man with multiple personalities, your expression would be a little bit more than, duh, this is weird. There were quite a few points where they took away from the overall impact of the scene just by how they were reacting to him. Their performances were incredibly unprofessional and underacted, and the less they were in the film, the better it was. Another thing that bothered me was how a couple of the conversations were paced. Perhaps it was just how the scenes were edited, but there were a couple of them that seemed kind of off. There are two characters next to each other in a room having a conversation, and the camera cuts back and forth between each one of them. And somehow the way it was delivered felt as though they might as well have been in separate rooms. There was no flow to how they talked, and it was difficult to believe a conversation was even taking place. In those few scenes, it felt very reminiscent of M. Night's worst films. It was as if there were different personalities from the timeline of his directing career competing as the same direct- Oh my god! Guys, I figured it out! The movie's an unintentional metaphor for the drastically different personalities of each of M. Night's films throughout his career. I don't care if he knows it or not, that's what he made. Deny it all you want, M. Night. We all know there's a different version of yourself buried somewhere deep inside your subconscious that knows this to be true. In all seriousness, this was the first M. Night film in a long time where I was actually interested in what was happening. God damn it, I can't even say that word anymore. It was also the first M. Night film in a long time where there were reasonable excuses for things to happen. There were a few moments in the film that I can think of where I was like, wait a minute, why would this character do this? But somewhere in the film, there would always be a reasonable excuse for it that I hadn't yet realized. The main character herself has a decent amount of depth to her. And lastly, there are parts of this film that are genuinely disturbing. Things that were shown that other films might not have shown so much of. It's refreshing to see M. Night taking risks, and it's refreshing to see him making something that isn't a gigantic piece of shit. So check this one out as soon as you can, and be careful what you search up about it because this is a movie where certain scenes can be spoiled for you. This is the best film that M. Night's made since Signs, and whether or not it's better than Signs, I'll have to think about it. Definitely not as good as Unbreakable or The Sixth Sense, but either way, it is a drastic improvement from his recent films. And I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Whoa, hey guys, I just wanted to say you should check out my gaming channel. It's pretty sweet. There's a link right there. Please check it out. That would be great. Thank you. Here's a clip. Excuse me while yes. I... It's Get up out of my chair so that I can grab the fucking pepper. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. She's violently gesturing. Maybe you could hear me better if there wasn't this obnoxious music playing at full blast. 